very happy and very pleasant morning here in Bangalore. The drizzles have come back, that too in the morning, so you're greeted with nice little pitter-patter of uh, rain to start the day. And we come to a very nice, very interesting topic which I've always been fascinated with. Overall, if you see what we are going to be talking about is assertiveness. And in that specifically, we are going to be talking about how to say no. Because either you or people known to you may be so soft and so kind that you find it very difficult to say uh, no. How do you deal with it is what we are going to talk about today. But before I come to this specific topic, let me talk a little bit about uh, assertiveness. You see, there are three types of behavior when you interact with uh, people. You can be aggressive or dominating. You can be passive and submissive. Or in between these two, you can be assertive. What does it mean? You know very well what is aggressive and dominating. You know, people who always want to have the best of every conversation. They want to show off to others. They want to prove that they are always right and they are very loud and very arrogant and all. Nobody likes such people, obviously. Sometimes they do get away with what they want because people are scared of them. But in the long run, it really doesn't help because people are waiting for an opportunity to get back to them or get away from them. The other extreme is where people are very, very soft, you know, submissive, giving in for uh, in everything. Now, those people are taken advantage of, as you know. So what do we mean by this in-between thing called assertiveness? Assertiveness is where you learn to balance your needs with those of others. You do not give in where you feel that you don't have to give in. And at the same time, you do oblige when you feel that the other person deserves that you oblige him or her. But equally important is how you convey that assertiveness. If you are blunt, if you are curt, and if you say, I am not going to do this or I expect you to do that, people may not like it. Because as you know, in human interactions, it is not what you say which is important, but how you say which is uh, uh, important. Now, in that, when you want to be assertive, when you want to ensure that your rights are not trampled upon, and at the same time, you do not want to trample on other people's uh, rights. You do not want to dominate or you don't want to push people down. You want to maintain that balance. And as long as your needs, your wants are being uh, looked into and being uh, you know, respected, you say, OK, now I allow people to do what they uh, want. In this, obviously, one of the key areas is to be able to say no. When somebody comes to you and asks for something which you are clear that you do not want to oblige that person. Here I would say before we even talk about saying no is to make sure that you think over. So the first step if you want to become assertive and if you want to learn how to say no to uh, uh, people is to be able to tell uh, to be able to think over whether I'm sure that I do not want to do this or oblige on this or whether I want to do it partially or whether I want to do it later and not now. First, you should be very clear in this. This manifests itself so often. I come across, for example, parents. A child is throwing a tantrum saying, I want pizza or I want this toy or I want to go to the mall or whatever the child is asking uh, for. Parents in their hurry and in their, you know, whatever other occupation that they have, they immediately turn around and say no. And they back it up with some, you know, nasty comments. You're always making these demands. 
what do you think money gurus on trees or something like that right okay then the child knows that maybe i can get away if i throw tantrums so the child goes on repeating and the child says no i don't want anything else i won't eat or drink unless you give me this i will not go to school if you do this the child goes on and on and on and the parent at one point gets fed up and says okay you stupid fellow come on take it now this is what i want to start off with that when you are going to say no be sure that it is a no if you think that just by the other person persuading you or being consistent or even being irritating you are going to let go of it then you are making a very big mistake by saying no because you are teaching the other person that while you do not care enough for the person to give in whatever he or she wants at the same time you are conveying that if that person is persistent and irritating and consistent you will buckle down and you will give in so that is the first step whenever somebody asks for something it could be a little child making a demand it could be in the office it could be among family members or society or friends when a person makes a demand on you when the person says i want this from uh, you first check out take time if necessary say i just want to think over for a minute if nothing else say i just uh, want to go to the washroom or i want to have a glass of water or i had this important message to shoot off i'll finish that then i'll talk to you do not say yes or no do not give him hope also and do not cut him down also leave him in that suspense and use that time to think if it's a very important matter then it is okay even to ask for a lot of time by saying that i'll let you know tomorrow because this involves a lot of time effort or money or whatever it is so i need some time to think over i'll reply to you tomorrow you have neither said yes nor you said no neither have you given hope nor have you put the other person down so depending on how major the issue is and how serious it is you should ask for time that should be the first one the second thing is that once you say no you should stick to it if you get the reputation that by bugging you continuously people can get things uh, done then you had it every time people will be making unreasonable demands of uh, uh, you yet it is a fact that many of us find it difficult to say uh, no logically if i ask you is it good to please all the people all the time is it even possible to do that logically you will say no it's not possible to uh, do that can you be happy giving in all the time supposing you somehow decide that no i i don't care for myself i care only for others and i want to go on giving do you really think it will help do you think people will be happy with you no turning the other cheek doesn't help all the time being submissive and obliging people thinking that they will be nice to you, you it doesn't work people get more and more their expectation goes up and the funny thing is that if you do not give in even once then they get very uh, uh, upset with uh, you that's a funny part of it 10 times you oblige a person and the 11th time you say no the person turns to you and says that what is this uh, you know i was uh, leaning on you i thought you will definitely oblige you had oblige me earlier how come you are not doing it uh, uh, now that is what i want you to understand okay now while logically this may be fine and you may be you know in agreement uh, uh, with it you should also understand why it is uh, difficult when you find it dif difficult to say no what are the consequences that you have to bear once that becomes a little clear to you you will be able to reinforce to yourself that when i have to say no i will say no so for that i made out a few points and i requested anish to 
put it in a nice slide and she's got this habit of pulling out some nice graphics also to go uh, with it. So we'll show you this little uh, slideshow of a few important uh, uh, points of what happens when you find it difficult to say no. What are the consequences that you have to suffer? You end up doing things that you don't like to do. I have made up my mind that I don't like this, but just because somebody came and I could not say no to him, I end up doing things which I don't like to do. And because of that, you lose respect for yourself for doing things that you don't like. Your self-esteem goes down. What a stupid fellow. Why do I keep doing? Why do I oblige everybody? Like that, the thoughts come to your mind. Think it over. Then, because you waste your time and energy doing things that you don't like, you do not have the time and energy for doing things which you like. There are people whom you want to oblige, but you don't uh, do that. Others take you for granted. Remember that I told you also. Ten times you say yes to things which you don't want to say yes to. People will presume that 11th time they can get away by asking you for something. Not being able to say no produces a lack of communication between you and the other person. You start becoming uncomfortable. You start trying to avoid that person. That person tries to become very assertive and dominating with uh, uh, you. So in a way, it actually spoils interpersonal relationships. People are, are under the uh, you know, mistaken this thing that you know people will be nice to me, they will respect me, and they will be thankful to me because I'm obliging them all the time. But in real life, that does not happen. Being able, uh, not being able to say no uh, produces lack of communication between you and it spoils the relationship. So if you are clear on the, uh, that, let me take you uh, forward. One important thing is please learn whom to say no to and whom not to say no uh, to. There are some people, very important people in our life where we may want to go out of the way and oblige. Whether that other person is pleased or not, I feel nice. Let's say I've got a parent or I've got an elder or somebody who has been extremely nice to me throughout my childhood and growing up years. Now, even if that person is making an unreasonable demand, if I go a little out of the way and help that uh, person, it is for myself that I'm doing it. As I said here, the self-esteem goes up. I feel nice that, yes, I have been able to give back in a little manner so much of what the other person uh, uh, has uh, uh, you know, given me. Yet, also identify people who try to take advantage of you. They are there all over the place, among your relatives, among your colleagues, among your neighbors, among just about anybody that you are interacting with. There are always a few people who are looking around for soft people whom they can badger and get things uh, uh, done. So in this particular case, what you have to understand and accept is that it is okay to hurt others occasionally by saying no. When you feel that you are doing the right thing in saying, uh, no. If that person chooses to be hurt, and believe me, these are the type of people who will make you feel guilty. What if this? I was relying on you. Why don't you oblige me? Such a small thing. What's so great about it? Why can't you do this to me? So they will start making an effort so that you start feeling guilty and you may then oblige the uh, person. So be aware of such people. In fact, I would request after today's session, make a list of some of those sticky people who are there around you, who inevitably, you know, keep taking advantage, who keep making you know, all sorts of demands and requests, and who get away with what they uh, want. In that category, most important are those who do not reciprocate. 
See, if that person asks you for a favor and you do it, and tomorrow you ask him for a favor and he does it, it's a give and take. So you won't feel bad. You know that, okay, there are times when I need uh, somebody's help and that same person is willing to help uh, me, you know, isn't it? So this is what I mean that please start understanding that it is better to hurt the person now rather than hurting later when his expectation has gone up. I told you that the more you keep obliging, the more the other person keeps making demands. This can happen between, for example, a husband and wife. One of the spouses is little dominating and aggressive. The other spouse decides to give in because after all, this is my life partner. I have to live my whole life. I do love this person. I want to have a harmonious relationship. So if I say no, or if I refuse something to this person, our relationship will get spoiled. But believe me, in the long run, and this is more applicable to close relationships like this, your closest people in the inner circle, no? it is very, very important. In Indian conditions, for example, women have been programmed into believing that the husband is the Lord and Master. It's been there for <coughs> not generations, but hundreds and thousands of uh, uh, years. Very difficult to shake it out. So if this wife starts obliging the husband, she doesn't want to do something, but he is forcing her. And she says, for the sake of my love for him, for the sake of harmonious life, for the sake of ensuring that there is no unpleasantness, I will oblige with the hope that because I am obliging, the person will feel nice and the person will say, oh, I've got such a good spouse who obliges uh, uh, me. Once you understand these basic uh, uh, things, also remember that you should not sound apologetic when you are saying no. Don't start off with, I'm so sorry, I would have liked to do, I can't do this. The moment you start that little whining process, no, the person knows that he or she can take advantage of uh, you. So what you have to do is to do it very assertively, like I told you in the morning. For that also, we have made a few slides as to how you can take that first step towards you know, being able to say no. One uh, method which I have found uh, helps is to use what we call as the partner system. Okay, You and your family member or friend or whatever it is, two of you feel that yes, we need to build assertiveness and we need to learn how to say no and not to unnecessarily give in to people. So you become partners to each other. So person A is being asked by somebody to do something and the person A is saying no. Person B observes and says, no, you sounded very apologetic. No, you looked very guilty or you felt, you know, it was looking as though you are doing something uh, uh, wrong or reverse. You came out very rudely to that person. Both of them are wrong, isn't it? And the next time person A observes person B. So start, see if you have a person like that and start off on the uh, partner uh, system. The next uh, thing is you know, practice uh, in front of a uh, mirror. Stand in front of a mirror, visualize the other person, the irritating person who keeps on making demands of uh, you. And as though you are talking to that person, see how you are saying, sorry, sorry I'm, I can't do it or whatever it is. And observe how your body language is. Body language plays a very important role in being able to say no assertively. If your body language is good, calm, but firm, Good eye contact, neutral expression on the face. Practice uh, that. Or you can also practice with you know, people who don't mean anything to you. You have the salesman who's trying to sweet talk your way into buying something. No, this is very good. Please go ahead. You will not get a thing like this. I will give you this discount and whatever the person is going on. Just review how you say no to that uh, person. You'll get an idea.
look at a number of items and decide not to buy. Walk into a shop, ask him, I want to see this, I want to see this, I want to see this. Then with a sweet smile, turn to the person and say, okay, thank you very much. Now I am, you know, knowledgeable about what you have and with the prices and all that. I came to check on that. But right now I'm not buying anything. I'll come back later and see whether you have that courage to walk off uh, like that. Also, at the same time, practice your smile whenever you are saying, no, make it sound like it's a pleasant thing that you are doing. I told you, no, neither that it should appear as though you are apologizing and you are you know, uh, feeling guilty about it, nor you should be curt or uh, you know, strong in that. Tell a colleague or family member that you will not do the work requested. Somebody close to you, try it out. And afterwards, review with that person and ask, how did you feel when I said no? Did you get upset? Did you get angry with me? And even if the person says, yes, I got angry, review it and say, this is the reason why I said it. Your anger is okay. I accept your anger. But do you want to hear what reason I had and why I have been saying no to you? With anybody who's close enough to you, start practicing that. Walk into a government office where some petty official is making some demands and is asking for a bribe or something. Look at that person straight in the face and say, sorry, I'm a citizen. I'm entitled to this. I'm not going to pay a bribe, but this is my application and I'm expecting you to process it. More than the result of what happens about that, it is the way you build up your habit and your confidence of how to go about uh, uh, doing uh, the uh, thing. These are some of the very simple tips. You can expand on it. You can add so many more from time to time. If you make a list like this, that this is how I'm going to do. And also, as I told you earlier, make a list of people whom you do not want to oblige, who have been persistently asking how you feel and uh, why, uh, you know, can't you do this for me? I want you to do this. I want your uh, help in this. I can't do it. You are the only one who can do this for me. It's such a small favor that I'm asking. These are all typical cliched statements by which people are go on asking. Reno is saying she's not getting audio. Are the other people getting it? Could somebody type in and tell us whether you're getting the audio or uh, uh, not? Yes, getting okay, fine. Sorry, Reno, I hope you can set right whatever has to be uh, done. Okay. In uh, When you are, uh, you know, saying no, keep a very basic, simple principle in mind. The other person has the right to ask and you have the right to refuse. Don't get upset just because the person asked if the person is making an unreasonable demand and you take it as a personal insult, how dare he ask me for it? What does he think of uh, himself? Why does he make such demands? You get caught up. And your body language is very negative. The way you respond, you may say things which you will regret later. So tell yourself that the person has the right to ask. And I have the right to refuse. I have thought over it calmly, patiently, and have come to the conclusion that no, I will not do it. And that is where you should learn the technique of saying no without giving excuses. Somebody suddenly walks up to you and says that, you know, my ATM card is not working. Can you give me, uh, lend me some money? I'll give it to you on Monday or something like that. Now, think over. Is that person trustworthy? Do you think he is genuine? Are you sure that he will return the money? Is the amount, you know, not too big to uh, put a uh, hole in your pocket? Think over. After that, if you decide that, no, it's not worth taking the risk, look at that person straight and say, 
I'm not in a position to give you. I can't. I think uh, you try with somebody else. Now, if you have noticed, you have not given excuses. If by chance you were to say something like, you know, ah, I would have given you, but I don't have the money in my purse. The person will say, let's go to the ATM nearby. You can draw some money and give it to me. Or you must be having money at home. I'll come with you to your house. Why don't you give me the money uh, there? The person can even, if you say, no, I have to draw from the bank. I don't have a, a credit card or whatever it is. And bank will open only on Monday, uh, something like that. The person can even say, I'll come back on Monday to take the money from uh, you. Somehow I'll manage for these two days. Monday I'll come and take it uh, uh, from you. Now you see how step by step you are getting deeper and deeper into the uh, uh, situation. You and the more that person tends to be manipulative, the more your resolve should be that I'm not going to oblige. I would rather give that money to somebody who is much more deserving than to a person who is just you know trying to be manipulative uh, with you. I would also like you to think over, you know, whether you have been guilty of not being able to say no in the recent past. Sit down after this uh, hour and just think over. Have there been any occasions where you have obliged a person when you did not want to oblige? You actually wanted to say no, but you landed up saying yes. Make a note of that. Those can be excellent case studies for you. Then, like I told you earlier, practice. Let's say next time that person comes back to me or a similar person comes uh, to me making such a demand, how will I answer that uh, uh, person? The more you practice, the easier it becomes. Remember that. It's like, you know, how uh, so many people are scared of public speaking. They say that, you know, I can't go on stage and speak. All you have to do is to just jump onto the stage, start speaking, fumble, stammer, do whatever it is. You do it one, two, three times and there you are. You can start speaking. You know? Same thing over here. The more you practice, the more you decide that, you know, this is what uh, you know can be done. And one more important thing before we come to the half hour uh, uh, break, please teach this to children. We talk so much about peer pressure and this and that. No, as children grow up, they come to adolescence, they have some negative uh, uh, no, pressures from some friends or peers or something, and they get into bad habits. Now, if you can teach a growing child this very basic, simple techniques, practice it, do a role play uh, with that, you know. Reverse the roles and say that, okay, you be papa or mama and I will be the child. I will ask you certain things. You tell me something. Or I will be a friend and I will say, come smoke a cigarette, man. What's wrong with it? Tell me how you are going to respond. When that person responds in a particular uh, uh, manner, then you show what is right and uh, wrong, that this is a good way, this is not a good way. Or what could be the consequences if the person says that, uh, no, my uh, you know, mother will get the uh, smell of smoke and then she will punish me. Okay, I'll teach you how to uh, have a peppermint after this. Wash your mouth nicely, have a peppermint, and then the uh, smoke uh, smell will not come to your mother. So he'll keep giving you certain excuses to pull you into this. Be sure that you, you are teaching the child how to say no in this very firm, simple. As I said, body language is very important. Do not avoid body um, uh, eye contact. Make eye contact. Have a neutral, maybe a slightly smiling expression and just say no. I will not be able to do that. Or I don't want to uh, do that. I hope you understand. That's it. Let the person rave and rant and say whatever they want. You have done your bit. Now you stick to it and you be quiet. These are things which have to be practiced, but over a period of time, it works. I assure you that it uh, uh, works. So whether it is you, whether it's somebody known to you who needs to build up this assertiveness and being able to say no, Please practice, practice, practice. And I'm going to take my 
one minute break and have a nice steaming hot cup of tea. The weather demands it. And here is Purnima for you. Good morning. Nice to know so many of you all are uh, here. So, but it's Ulta. You see me, I don't see you. And I wish I can really see you. And <clears throat> it will be a pleasure if, uh, uh, you know, anyone who so wants just drops in at the academy. And uh, uh, Ali has the pleasure of having a steaming hot cup of chai. So you can give us company. You can give him company and have some nice charcha over uh, chai. If you really, really wish, please come down to the academy sometime. Next Just Thursday. like that. Yeah. Coming Thursday, we have our uh, uh, free open talk from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So just drop in and let's have a nice hot cup of chai, discuss anything, everything, whatever that you are uh, convenient and feel comfortable uh, about. And uh, I was just thinking that if uh, after this also, if you have a little bit of a starting problem to tell a no, and you are wondering, how do I tell a no? Will this person feel? Can I just discuss it once again with uh, someone? You know, then I would want to tell you that counseling at the academy, you all know, is totally free at uh, Banjara. If distance is not, you know, to uh, your essence, you, it's difficult for you to come in. We uh, have the facility of you writing a mail to us. Uh, the mail ID is there just on the home page of our website. And our website also has a lot of uh, uh, good uh, videos and audios and uh, good articles in the free domain. You can just feel free to download them and you know read it peacefully whenever you have some uh, time over a cup of hot tea or coffee because the weather is nice and there's a nice nip in the air so you can peacefully put on your things and watch your uh, video and um, uh, sip your cup of uh, tea so when you are on our home page you will find that there is the email id so if you so wish or anyone who wants to you know uh, just uh, get a few things clarified discuss uh, with a neutral person then uh, we do extensive amount of counseling by writing through email in fact pan world there are people writing from different different countries and we have such a wonderful set of um, counselors and they are doing such diligent uh, work in this with you know so much of uh, sincerity and uh, swiftness i must say uh, they uh, ensure that anything which is a little more you know, complicated or needs urgent attention it's immediately brought to the attention of uh, ali and um, replies are sent out immediately so if you are you know uh, pondering that how do i still tell a no i need some more clarification write to us meet us at the academy or you can even um, call us up so you have all the facilities we'll be happy if you can avail any of uh, these and as uh, you know that along uh, with being a counseling center, there is a lot of uh, training and courses also happening at uh, Banjara. And after all the admissions are done, you know, we have some of them saying, oh, I did not know that this course was happening. I wish I knew I would have joined. So what uh, we are announcing and it's starting on November 28th is again an online uh, course, which is called post graduation diploma in psychotherapies all right so now what uh, happens is that many really really wish that uh, they can go further in the area of uh, psychotherapies go deeper understand the theoretical nuances but in a very experiential uh, way so that's where um, this uh, we have you know conceptualized uh, this course and we have two excellent uh, faculty members I'll just tell their name so you may possibly remember it. They are Chandra and Lakshmi. Okay. So both of them, Dr. Chandra and Dr. Lakshmi will be uh, mainly, you know, steering this uh, course uh, forward. 
it's online and it's for all those who may actually may have thought that should i take up a degree course you know with some university or something like that but i don't want to do a lot of uh, reading and i don't want to write exams so then this is an excellent platform for you to you know understand the different uh, psychotherapies which is done in a very um, experiential uh, way it's done so that uh, you know you feel the comfort of uh, having a nice self paced uh, learning and uh, your faculty members are going to be such uh, you know uh, diligent members and um, they really work for this cause so if you think that you or anyone would want to uh, take up this course please feel free to call up the academy and we'll have more information so that we can help you to take a informed decision okay and with that we have ali coming to you with all the questions so please bombard him with questions so that you know he can reply everything to you as much as possible have a nice day yes i'm back and we start with my very very dear and respected friend dr sai kumar from chennai he is a former professor of medicine and a civil surgeon and it's always a pleasure whenever i interact with him including now in this uh, facebook live program dr sai kumar says such an important topic so many including yours truly will have more at peace with oneself i wish it were easy to say no i agree dr sai it is not easy and that's the reason why we are discussing it while it is not easy it is not Im impossible either it can be done as i told you very basic fundamental tips what i have given you and a few more you can add on we also have a booklet on uh, you know how to build up your assertiveness skills it's a workbook for assertiveness those of you who are interested can ask for either a hard copy or a soft copy of uh, uh, that and once you do that you will find that slowly you develop that and once you develop it's a lifelong asset that you will be able to handle people who are trying to take advantage of you okay then we have surekha yes surekha has also been a very dear friend and very active on our facebook saturday meetings So Surika says, when we say a no, we risk that person's disapproval. Yes, when we say yes every time, we are giving up our own interest and desires in order to please others. This is one very important thing. I'm glad Surika brought it up. That we risk that person's disapproval. So I asked you right in the beginning, would you be happy giving in all the time? Is it good to please all the people all the time? would you like to oblige a person who is very sticky and goes on making demands rather than a person whom you genuinely love and even when the person is not making a demand would you not like to you know do things and say things uh, for you the little gestures for example that surekha does periodically with us you know sends us some very nice uh, homemade uh, cooking and different types of uh, uh, dishes we don't have to ask her and she doesn't have to say no or yes but she respects that she shows her affection that way so would you not rather do it to people whom you really care for and whom you want to be nice to whether they are asking you or not rather than for those who are pestering you yes gayatri says pgdp in psychotherapy was very helpful good content glad i did it yes so those of you who have not done it or those who are interested can join even our uh, you know uh, the international program in child and adolescent development is just starting one batch has started one more is starting now so if those of you are interested in knowing children much better you know that's a lovely online uh, program through lms that too so you don't have time constraints you can go through the lesson that you are convenient and interact in the mentors uh, uh, sessions Yes, uh, Satyavati says being assertive needs a lot of courage in some situations. Yes, so I have an answer to that. Don't take up those which are very difficult situations. 
if you have somebody who is in position of authority, who is elder, who's got some power over you, don't try to practice your assertiveness or your uh, you know, saying no with such people because you may get flabbergasted and you may lose your confidence. Start with small people. You know, I gave that example. Start with a salesman. Some salesman is trying to do some sweet talking to you. Look at him straight in the eye and say, good, you have explained your product, but I don't want to buy it. That is uh, much easier. Do it with children sometimes. You know, a, children, a child is bugging you, going on saying, I want this or I want that. If you can you know, look at the child straight, not shout at the child, not you know, make comments like, you know, what do you think like this? Why do you want this? Nothing like that, but learn to say no. From there, you will be able to pick up and go on to the more difficult uh, ones. Ah, then uh, Pratima says, uh, uh, what would the reaction of the other person who has taken you for granted? Will they try again? Yes, they will. Be prepared for that. Because if they have already taken you for granted, what does it mean that you have been obliging them? So. And the first time when you say no, they are going to be not only very upset and disappointed, they are going to make you feel guilty. Hey, I depended on you. Who else can I go to? You are my best friend. You are the only one who can oblige me. If you let me down now, I'm going to be in deep trouble. Say yes, when I could oblige, I have obliged as you yourself have said just now. But this time, I am not in a position to oblige. So my answer is no. Ah, Suchetna says, say yes 10 times and the 11th time say no. All that you have done till then goes in vain. It is truly sad. That's exactly what I've been trying to push that thing through. There was that cute little story of a beggar who used to go shouting at every house. And there was this lady who inevitably used to give him some food or the other. And then he would go and shout at another lady's house and that lady would curse him and shout at him and ask him to get lost. One fine day it so happened that the first lady had nothing cooked in her house. There was not a morsel to eat. And when he stood there shouting and begging, she came out and very apologetically said, sorry, I don't have anything to give you. I don't have any food at home, so I cannot give you. And this fellow was shocked. He said, something you give me, you always give me and you're not giving me. And he mumbled, grumbled and went to the next uh, lady's house and started shouting louder there. That lady was in some good mood that day, so she brought out something and said, okay, take it and go. And he tells that lady, Amma, you are like an angel. You have saved my life today. You have saved me from getting starved. Look at that horrible woman. I was relying on her every time she gives me. So I came with that assurance that she will give me. And she says she has nothing to give me. What a horrible woman she is. But you are so sweet. You have saved me. You gave me food at a time when I did not have any other source. This is a typical behavior of people who make unreasonable demands. Ah, Surekha has brought a very nice point. Saying a no helps us to test relationships. My inability to say a no makes me a slave. Absolutely right, Surekha. People take you for granted. They make you a slave. They make you, you know, jump up at their uh, beck and uh, call but if you learn how to say no doesn't matter if initially it looks like a relationship is getting spoiled and many of these people are not worth having a good relationship with if they are so one-sided if they only keep making demands of you why do you need them as friends why do you need to have a good relationship with uh, uh, them Ha, Pratima is asking, does uh, putting the ball in their court help keeps them away? Yes, it does. I think you, you may be able to get the money from this uh, bank or you may be able to get that work done by somebody uh, else. Why don't you try that uh, uh, out? Let me uh, help you. Or introspect why this happened and so that ensure that next time you get, don't get into this. Uh, but right now, I have to say no to you. So like that, what we call as the broken record, those of you who are old enough to remember gramophone records, you know, when, when a gramophone record is playing, if there is a cut in those grooves, the uh, pin would keep jumping back and the same line would be playing again and again. So we call that a broken record technique that you keep making eye contact, you keep having a neutral or a smiling expression, you keep your voice uh, low, keep your body erect. 
and keep repeating like a broken record. No, I cannot. No, I will not be able to oblige you. Yeah, I understand your need is very strong, but I'm not in the position to do it, right? Okay, Roshan says, from your childhood, if you are taught not to get hurt when somebody says no, and also as parents, if we can look into the eyes of the child and say a firm no, then the child realizes to accept whatever is good for him. Yes, Roshan, you are absolutely right. And that's why I said that once you say no to a child, do not give him, give in to him if he uh, throws tantrums. It is difficult to say no, but as Ali said, with practice, we will be able to achieve saying a no without feeling guilty or making excuses. That is the bottom line. You should not feel guilty. You should not give excuses. You should be able to understand that the other person has a right to ask and I have a right to refuse. Haha, <laughs> that's a good one, Dr. Saikumar says. Long time since you came to Chennai. Don't look straight and say no. Love to have you with us for a short while in unusually pleasant weather. I've actually been thinking that I should. It has been a long time since I met Dr. Sai, and it's always a pleasure to spend time with him. Anybody else willing to come with me, we'll make a group and we'll make a nice uh, trip to Chennai and spend some time with Dr. Sai Kumar and maybe some time on the beach and come back. So thank you for the invitation. I'm definitely going to consider it seriously and I'm not going to say a no. Ah. Yes, Roshan, broken record is a good technique. It's a time proven uh, technique. It takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little bit of patience, but in the long run, it does work. That is what I want all of you to you know, keep in the mind. In fact, now that this has been mentioned, let me also tell you, try to recall what happened when you did not say no. Somebody came and made an unreasonable demand. You are fairly clear that I do not want to oblige this person. But for whatever reason, you did oblige that uh, person, maybe more than once. If you can start thinking, and reviewing what happened in those circumstances. At that moment, the person was very happy. The person thanked you profusely and said a lot of nice things about you. But that was only to prepare you to oblige for the next time, not because the person really loves you. Remember that. And the result was that before you know it, that person was back with you know, another uh, demand. Ah, Renu says, sometimes it's difficult to be assertive in certain relationships. Yes, that's why I, what I said, no, make a list of the people with whom you are finding it difficult to say no or difficult to be uh, assertive. In that list, again, I told you, no, that first mark out the important ones. It may be a close uh, uh, relationship. Yes, especially when you're married. That's why I mentioned also that the Indian woman has been programmed into believing that you know you have to oblige you have to first oblige your father then you have to oblige your husband then you have to oblige your son so it's so programmed into the culture of indian women you have to break free from it i'm not saying you should revolt or you should stop doing things for your loved ones i'm just saying that balance your needs with those of others do not give in just because the person is in you know, has certain relationship where you're finding it difficult. So that's why I told you, practice it on people where it is easier and then come back to tackle the person with whom it is uh, difficult. So once you've built up your confidence and all that, then it becomes uh, easier, right? Surika says, saying a no enhances my risk-taking ability. Yes, that's a very lovely point. The person who does not take any risk does not does nothing and becomes uh, nothing. You're absolutely right. Uh, Surika, in general, also it increases your risk taking ability. It in you know your decision making uh, ability, your power to you know chart out the correct paths and do things which you know will boost up your self esteem. All these things get benefited. There are so many side effects and advantages of uh, learning this technique of how to say no. Vinita says it's difficult. But yes, it's just the first step we need to take. Then it gets better every time. Yes, it does. You have to be a little patient. 
there could also let me warn you there could also be some negative experiences somebody blows his top and says i don't want to talk to you you are a very rude person you don't oblige and this and that so you may start rethinking that have i made a mistake by saying no should i have obliged am i doing the wrong thing am i being arrogant no don't get carried away by that one person in fact talk it over with some trusted person or a counselor or somebody and say this is what i did and this is what the person did am i at fault you will get to know that no you are not at uh, uh, fault and as she says slowly it starts getting better and remember that any of these in almost like every saturday whatever techniques and whatever you know basic uh, life skills that we keep talking about if you work on it if you practice on it and you build it up it is not a change it is a transformation it is an asset which you acquire lifelong because you don't know in future what type of interactions what type of relationships you will have to face you will learn each one of those uh, uh, thing that is as saying no followed by a short explanation and adding your feelings to it helps me yes guys you why not that would be even better if you can explain and say that you know normally perhaps i may have obliged you but these are the circumstances i am a little tired or i have some other uh, commitments i am not in a position to Uh, do that i'm getting a little you know stressed out by some other commitments make it as general as possible and the key thing is to aim it at yourself and not at others the moment you say why do you make such demands or why do you uh, want me only to oblige you or something the other person gets offended and the other person can start throwing things at you also which can be very hurtful Ha ah, yes rekha i agree with you absolutely that constantly saying a yes may make me a stranger to my own self yes because you are obliging everybody except yourself supposing you have a close person in uh, your life and only that person you don't oblige you oblige everybody else won't that person become a stranger to you won't your relationship slowly get diluted and dissolved now what are you doing by saying yes uh, every time you are dissolving and diluting your relationship with yourself and you cannot do that the only human being with whom you live 24 by 7 into 365 till the end of your life is yourself you cannot afford to make yourself unhappy Ah yes Sujatna says saying no depends on how genuine a person or the situation is yes firstly how genuine the person is that's why i told you earlier do that please make a list of people who you want to oblige at any cost whom you love very much unconditionally similarly make a list of people who unnecessarily keep making demands on you it could be a neighbor it could be a colleague it could be just a casual acquaintance there are a lot of such people floating around so become aware that i think earlier once twice this person was trying to be a little overbearing this person was trying to take a lot of favors from me so i better keep that person in my warning uh, uh, list and also how genuine is the request right divya says um, are we ready to accept certain no's from people around us how to get mature to that yes that is equally important when i said that we should learn how to balance our needs with those of others so when somebody else is saying no to me please don't take it as a personal insult don't let your ego come into it again the same thing that i told in the beginning take time to think over and as we go on drilling into the empathy factor go into the why of the what what did the person do the person said no to me why did the person say no to me the more you build up that skill of empathy you will understand supposing it is for genuine reason the person is overloaded the person is not in a position to oblige or the person is stressed out then you can give him the benefit of doubt and say it's okay 
even if he has not obliged me and had said, no, I accept it. At the same time, if you come to know that that person is so selfish, that the, uh, you know, the person keeps uh, uh, you know, saying no for uh, um, anything that uh, I ask, then become aware that this person is not a genuine friend, is not my well-wisher, I better be careful in my relationship with that person. Ha. Huh. Next one. Roshan Banaji says, ha, uh, Dr. Saikumar says, could it be a dynamic list? Yes, it can be. It can keep changing. Do it on a periodic uh, uh, basis. Roshan says, do not say a no to Dr. Sai. Asama and we were discussing how to make two friends meet and spend time together. So thankful to you and Dr. Sama both. I would really like to give this uh, thought and let's work out on uh, 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 this. And coming back to Dr. Saikumar's uh, uh, point, could it be a dynamic list? Yes, I think that is a good point that you have raised. It should be a dynamic uh, uh, list in the sense that you cannot make a list and keep it forever. Maybe sometime later equations change. I have always been emphasizing on the fact that relationships are dynamic, they keep changing. A person may be very trustworthy right now. Over a period of time, the person may not be as trustworthy or vice versa. Person may not be very trustworthy, may not, you may not know the per person well enough to oblige, but over a period of time, the person becomes close to you. You keep liking the person, you want to oblige that uh, uh, person. So once that happens, you know that you know you are on the right uh, uh, track. Keep updating that uh, uh, list, and at the same time, keep practicing. Without practice, nothing will happen. Suddenly, you will encounter that you are in a situation where you get sort of unnerved or you get flabbergasted. How do I handle this? And you may land up either by giving in and obliging and then feeling bad about yourself, or becoming too aggressive and saying, why do you want me to do that? Um, as it is, I've got 10 other things to do and you people don't care or something. You know, the moment you start doing things like uh, uh, that, you will realize that you are, you know, unnecessarily spoiled the relationship. And that is why I said developing the skill called how to say no is something that will help you permanently. It will always help you in uh, uh, life. Sujitna says, thank you, Ali and uh, team. At the same time, I would like you to tell you that all of you uh, uh, viewers, particularly those who have been literally like a family and who have been with us uh, almost on every Saturday, whenever you could join us and have contributed by your comments and your uh, questions, I want to tell you that each of these things, more than anything else, they require practice. And not only practice yourself, as I told you right in the beginning, this, you know, partner system, try to get somebody else also. So both of you in turn are helping each other to develop that uh, uh, skill. And that is what can help you. You can reach out to others. I mentioned also that if you can teach children, that would be a really great thing to uh, do. Every child deserves to learn basic life skills which, as you know, are not part of our regular curriculum. So as concerned adults, if we can do this, of helping children learn these skills, assertiveness is definitely one of the skills. Learning how to say no will really be useful for uh, uh, children as they grow up and they face pressure from unwanted uh, uh, sources. So these are some of the things which I really want to do. Ash says, hi, Ali. Hi, Ash. Good to see you. Uh, on the FB Live and all of you who have been uh, you know, listening, contributing, interacting, etc. And as you know, this remains on the Facebook page of Banjara Academy. So if you have friends or known people, you know, whom when you mention, they say, oh, I was not free, I could not log in. They can, uh, go. only thing is they will not be able to participate by asking questions, but they can definitely, you know, uh, access the same program any time later at their convenience and watch it for whatever it is uh, uh, worth. So with that, I sign off and Anis is going to tell you the next Saturday's program, which is responding to criticism. How do you respond to criticism?
So see you again. That is November at 11 o'clock and learn how to respond to criticism. Bye-bye and thank you.